Good afternoon, Corey from Rockpile. How are you today? Hope you're going well. Hope, uh, what day is it today? It's Thursday today. So I hope your Thursday is treating you kindly. So to crack a day here in, here, not in, but at Rockpile, it's about 24 degrees. Still feels quite warm, but uh, oh, beautiful. Nice day for digging trenches, because you know how much I love digging. So, it doesn't look like much, but let me tell you, that is about 50 metres of trench. Uh, it's about 150 mil deep, 50 mil wide. So far, I've got uh, seven fruit trees hooked up to it. So that's bloody awesome. And there, and then we have a little junction here. Now what I'm doing, uh, I think they call it a closed loop system. Essentially, it's a circle with sprinklers on it, and then a main off to the tap. So that whole circle will become pressurised equally. So if you're wondering what my uh, method is, I've tried a few things. I've tried some little contraptions I made up quickly in the shed to like drag behind the lawnmower. So Manda drives a mower. I use this playoff thing to try and do a trench. Didn't really work. I didn't kind of have enough pressure to keep it in the ground. I've got my little rotary tiller, which is over here. Now what I've done is I've taken all the blades off it, apart from one. But I found with one blade on it, it doesn't actually make the trench like that. I do that at the end. But it cuts it up very nicely. Makes it all soft. And then I get the hose and I wet it. And then I get, I call this my pelican pick. So this is pelly. Because it looks like a pelican. This is actually found at the tip. Someone was chucking this out. It was in their trailer. And he goes, no, oh, bloody heap of shit. I don't want that. And I thought, mate. That is awesome. So I took that and then I just scrape it out with the point of that and we have a nice, nice trench. And we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we'll do this one here, that'll be eight fruit trees. And then we're just left with a perimeter up to my left and a perimeter up to my right. They're the two longest runs. So I'm just gonna uh, just dig out the rest of this trench here and just put this last little bit of poly pipe on. Right, so that's that. Bit to go, but be well worth it when it's all underground and you can run around with the lawnmower and mow it and you can push a button and your water, your sprinklers come on and it's just so much easier. So all I do, I showed you the app and stuff on the last one. Um, just go into it, I'll put five minutes and start, that's just a manual Fight a manual start, so it just turned on, I could hear it, and uh, now they'll all come on. Underneath the little almond tree here, there's a two way almond tree. Uh, the little birdies that we get love it, they're, uh, oh, they're only tiny, maybe no more than two inches tall. Um, so, what I've done. I just got a little watering bowl and it uh, under the sprinkler and the sprinkler fills it up with water. All right, and then obviously when it's full it just overflows, so into the tree. But the birds come down in the morning. Oh god. Hey bloody, they have a fat time in there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'm pretty happy with the almonds. They're uh well except for that one that's been half eaten, but they're coming up to a good size. They are. And that's great. Great. 
Yeah, so those sprinklers are working at feet. I'll just go over to this other one here. Beautiful, that's plenty of water. So we worked it out. I'll do some quick math now. Hang on, I'll put the camera back on the stand, so bear with me. Okay, so what we're, oh, the camera looks a little bit crooked. Do I look crooked? Probably. There we go, how's that? That better? That looks level now. Um, so we worked it out that these sprinklers do just under a litre a minute. So you go 15 litres in the morning, 15 litres in the afternoon, that's 30 litres a day per tree. 30 times 7 is 210. So over a 7 day period, that's 210 litres for that one tree. And I'm going to do a quick count up. 210 times 20, 4,200 to be exact. So we're chewing about 4,000 litres a week. Now, over in the olive grove, they get watered once a day also. I normally do them with just the firefighting trailer. Another thousand litres a week on them. We also have 40 odd native trees on this first berm that we put in last year, and they're on a drip system. I think they use about 100 litres a day. So that's 700 litres a week. And then we need to hook up another gravity system for those tr trees we put on the swale that you saw and I think there was another 40 or so of them so we've got 4,200 here we've got a thousand over there that's 5,200 and then say if you allowed 500 to 700 litres a week for those drippers um, that is a lot of water wow lucky we have a good bore and we haven't even got any animals. <laughs> oh, well, sorry, I lied. We have two dogs and some chickens and a random shed cat. But we haven't even made the move to getting cows or, well, mainly cows. We don't want anything else. We just want cows. So say a cow, peak of summer, goes through 100 litres a day, right? Maybe more. So call it 100 litres a day, one cow. And if we want five cows, that's 500 litres a day times seven so seven fives are 35 that's three and a half thousand liters a week on top of the six thousand liters a week to water the fruit trees we're at nine and a half thousand liters a week is that right that just seems like so much water that's got to be right uh when you move to a property and you go oh yeah i want to put all these fruit trees in and run this veggie patch we haven't even talked about the water i use in the veggie patch either <laughs> Right, okay, so, yeah, so you, you want to put, you want a big orchard, you want a big veggie patch, you want to run these cows and sheep and animals or whatever, you know. Yeah, just remember, where's all that water come from? Our water is only caught on the roof of the house and the roof of the shed. And if we didn't have that bore, we would have to pump water from our dam up here to a tank but then in summer uh, in the peak of summer our dam virtually dries up it only goes down to about a meter deep in the middle so if we're taking 10,000 liters a week out of it every week i don't know how many liters is in the dam it's pretty big it's like 50 meters round by five meters deep uh, yeah, if we were pumping and needed 10,000 liters a week I reckon that dam would dry up way before the end of summer. And then what? The only water supply we have left is our rainwater in that tank. Now that tank we've got is a small tank. It's only 85,000 litres. 20,000 gallons or something. Sounds a lot, but say you need two months worth of water, you know, and you're pulling... 10,000 litres a week out of it well you got to make some uh, make some calls do you do you start downsizing your animal herd do you start letting your fruit trees um, trying to span the watering out on them so you can save water on your fruit trees 
risking that in where we live we get temperatures up towards 50 celsius in summer 48 degrees celsius in the bush man it is cooking so yeah that's it water wow big water consumption it's a key part of having a big property with uh being self-sustainable with producing food uh whether it's you know fresh fruit and veggies or meat without water you are toast Good morning everyone, how are ya? So it's 10 to 7 in the morning, Saturday, and it is a pristine day. It is, oh, I can't describe how lovely it is this time of morning. Now yesterday I laid out, I don't know if you can just see in the background here, the black poly pipe on the ground, and hooked up the sprinklers just so the trees can all be watered automatically. And today I'm just going to start working my way with the trench to uh, start putting the pipe in the ground. So I might just give you a quick little rundown of my method, uh, just so you can see what I have found works, or helps, or makes it easier, or whatever. Uh, first, because I, I can't remember if I showed you what is this machine actually is. So it's just a little, ro little uh, petrol-driven rototiller, just made from overseas, got it pretty cheap. These go brand new for about $700. About the same price as the dog, hey? I think the dog actually digs more holes than this thing does. So normally it has, so it has another set of blades here and then another set over here. And it just digs about 400 mil wide and roughs up the surface. I'll just use that in the veggie garden. So that's what I'm going to use to uh, loosen the ground to start the trench. Now this has been sitting out here all night, so it's cold as. And a uh, little secret method to starting. It, you know, every motor has its own different little method that makes it start easier. So this one, I put the choke on, give it two pulls of the pull cord, and then turn the on switch on, and then pull it, and it starts. And I'm going to say every time. So hopefully this will be right. So choke on. Make sure it's off. Yep. Two pulls. Um, about a quarter throttle. Flick the switch on. Give it another squirt with the hose and just let it soak for a bit and try and get uh, sort of that final little shape here in the bottom of the trench and the pipe sits in it quite nicely and it goes it's probably in about that far so that's that's plenty for us dogs tell ya with black dogs with white feet yeah you 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna keep digging with me little buddy hey
someone dropped his bone in the camera bag. Was it? Got it, well done. He's so smart. <laughs> hey, this is exciting. I'm on the little, on the home stretch back to where I first started. So I've got like, whatever that is, six, seven meters. And then I'm done for trenching with all the pipe that I have today. So my overall thoughts of this whole process, I reckon the little cultivator with the one the one blade on it to loosen up the soil about six inches deep it was an absolute winner even though it took a bit of uh, still takes some manual digging to form a trench but to dig the trench just with a shovel in the hard soil uh, would be a lot more work so I found three passes with that it gets me down to the loosen it up then you wet it let it absorb the water and then it becomes quite easy to dig out. So I'm quite proud of that, that's good. It's another job that's kind of gets a tick on the list. So I'm just going to potter around here and get this last bit of pipe in. Thanks folks, hope you uh, enjoyed the journey and some of Dozer's little antics. It's always fun working with a dog that you don't know if, either, if he's smart or thick, I don't know special so please subscribe like share tick the box ring the bell and enjoy your weekend see you folks